Morning, everyone. This is Lillian Motambo. Thanks for joining my live stream on my YouTube channel, Lily Motams TV, and my Facebook page, Honorable Lillian Motambo Monali Constituency. Uh, uh, this morning, I just want us to discuss this very sad news. Uh, very briefly, actually, I'm about to go somewhere, but I thought, let me just um, talk about this issue which is really heartbreaking. And that is why some of us have always talked about the failures of the system in Zambia, because we have realized that if we don't speak about these things, these things will carry on. And I know that the family is devastated during this heartbreaking moment where a young doctor, 23 years old, who recently graduated in Russia and was taking up an internship for only two months at Kawe General Hospital has died. Thank you so much. For those of you who would like to join the stream, uh, there's the link on my Facebook page as well as my YouTube channel. Um, it's just for us to talk about these things. When we talk about the system failure, um, this is what we always talk about. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna read about um, you know Dr. Abigail and just read some heart pouring sentiments from the family, which are quite heartbreaking. Uh, yes, yeah, so I've just sent the link for those of you who would like to join. So I'll go on um, Facebook and read. I'll go on Facebook and read. I'll use my other phone. I'll go on Book. Oh, the brother, sorry about that, I lost signal a bit. Morning, how are you? So the brother wrote, uh, at first it was, you know, a tribute, she's passed on at uh, Kawe uh, General Hospital. I first saw it on Mwebantu Media, uh, where they had talked about um, her and only to see another tribute now from the brother where he explains what happened. So let me just read the one from uh, Mwewan to Media. How are you, everybody? Uh, if you'd like to join the discussion, there is the link. I know I've never done a live stream this time, but as you can hear from my voice, I am ever so busy. And if I don't um, take time uh, to speak to you guys, I'll look too busy for you. Okay, so Dr. Abigail is a young uh, medical profession that has um, passed on, and uh, that's her beautiful image. What a beautiful young lady. And um, here's another image of her graduation. Which long ago, that's how on her, I don't know why it's buffering, but that's how on her graduation. Yeah. And um, so let me just read something. Okay, so um, 23 year old medical doctor dies. A family and friends and me the medical fraternity are mourning the death of a 23 year old uh, doctor, Abigail Mlenga, from Kawe General Hospital. She fell ill on Friday. Um, and was transferred to UTH for treatment on Sunday, and she died last evening, Monday, uh, 24th August, 2020. Resident Doctors Association of Zambia announced um, Dr. Malenga's death on their Facebook page, uh, you know, the evening when she passed on. Um, reports indicate that she was a junior doctor at Kawe General Hospital and had only been there for two months prior to her death. Dr. Mulenga was one of the best graduating students at Ivano Medical uh, University in uh, 2019. Uh, obviously, our heart felt condolences to the family, friends, colleagues of Dr. Mulenga Abigail. It's, it's very sad, you know, when you hear of such, and then you wonder, you know, what went wrong, uh, because from the post that I had read from the brother, uh, it was stated that she only had a, a headache. And then there's another um, article that has been posted where the brother says this, no 
patient, relative, especially mother, should go through what my mother and I went through at Kawe General Hospital. Um, at Kawe General Hospital, um, Friday into Saturday morning, the system failed you, my sis, beautiful sister. As doctor, as you were still, I had to plead and beg for painkillers. We also had to plead for you to be seen that night, Friday night. This is too painful, Abby. My last memories of you are seen in severe pain, crying out for life. I even told them, but they ignored. The system failed you, my baby sister. I just had to express myself before you are laid to rest. Two months, no pay yet. You worked for them diligently. Then today, they want to give you um, your salary for two months. Um, my sister, this is hard. What do I do with the budget we made? How do we? How do you traumatize a mother restraining her daughter for hours with no help? Um, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. You know that we have such a system in Zambia in 2020 and you will vote for the same people in 2021. If, you know, each time I go and meet people, I keep on telling them that, look, if you're feeling the pain of this leadership, then you must do things wisely. You know, um, we can't have such where hospitals have no panado, common painkillers they don't even have. What type of a system is that? What type of a system is that? That we don't even have painkillers in hospitals. And they still want to come back next year and be in power when they have failed to even look after the Zambian people. I was in Kalikiliki yesterday. They don't even have a clinic. Now, a woman who's in labor has to travel all the way to Mutendere East just for a hospital or a clinic. In what way? You know, if these things don't pain you, please vote wisely next year. Um, you know, it's so sad that obviously in the 21st century, like now, people have no access to medicine. I can see there's um, JJ online. Let me add him to the stream. Hi, Lily. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good to have you on this stream. Yeah, great to be here. Unfortunately, tragic news. Um, yeah, yeah. And I think, I mean, all I have to say is really, I think we shouldn't underestimate as Zambians what happens when you have bad governance. This yes. is a classic example of bad governance trickling down to an ordinary citizen. You go to hospital because you need help, you're in pain, and you are screaming for help, and no one is helping you. And you literally die waiting for help. Um, and this is what you've been talking about, Lily, accountability in governance. Um, do not underestimate how much it affects people on the ground, everyday people. And we have the responsibility to call it out for what it is. We're no longer going to blindfold our eyes to what's going on in our country. We have to stand up and flush bad governance out because this is a direct result of people who are in authority of maintaining health services actually not doing their job, period. That's what it is. And you've got a young doctor, someone with a family, someone who is loved, she's got siblings, she's got parents, uh, newly qualified, obviously very smart, a very bright girl, just gone, literally, for no, for no, for no good reason. So I think we really need to start examining ourselves. We need to start examining our institutions. We need to examine the people we have entrusted to look after us, to manage our resources. And it's currently not working. We can no longer pretend that it is. It's not working. It just isn't. No, no, the system isn't working. And, um, you know, it's, it's a shame that the same government that is in power now they still want to retain power when there's so much poverty in Zambia, when the clinics don't even have medicine. Now, I'm, I'm feeling for the poor people. You know, there's loads of people who can't afford even a common Panadol, you know. And then these hospitals don't have. They are told, yeah. here's a prescription, go and buy Panadol from a, a, a shop. And, yeah. 
And yet there is an article I read on Al Jazeera where our government received medical supplies of more than $20 million. It's on Al Jazeera and those medical supplies went missing. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I, I always ask this question. What is the role of Dr. Chilufia? Yeah. You know, he's a decorated um, a minister who even funds $17 million to a pharmacy which doesn't even exist. And now it has happened yep. to, you know, somebody, at least the family has spoken out. That's why we know of this story. What about exactly. families exactly. who don't have access to social media, who have never spoken about the failures of the government? How do we have, we have so many of them? Mm -hmm. So exactly. it's, 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 it's pathetic. It's yeah. pathetic. Yeah. You know, so uh, it's so sad it. for the family, obviously, to experience. Mm. Yeah, carry on. Yeah, no, it's sad for the family. Definitely sad for the family. And when I heard this story, all I could think about is my siblings. You know, if I was at the hospital with my sibling and she was in pain and needed help, Mm. I would I would expect to be helped. That's that's why you go mm. to these hospitals is that you're, you're expecting to have your life saved. And I'll give you a short story. My sister had an accident about mm. uh, probably two years ago now. It was quite minor, but she still needed attendance. So she was on Great East Road. Someone sort of T-boned mm. her. Um, mm. And at that point, she needed to be taken mm. to Levi Mwanawasa. She got to Levi Mwanawasa with mm. obviously some strangers who'd taken her there. They get there. Uh, she's got a neck injury, uh, obviously can't move her neck very well. Mm -hmm. They didn't even have a stretcher mm -hmm. to put her on at Levi Manawasa. They didn't have a neck brace mm -hmm. to put to, 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 to straighten her neck. And it took my mm -hmm. mom going there and shouting at the top of her lungs at medical staff to get their act together. Mm -hmm. And we're so lucky that that accident wasn't actually serious. Mm -hmm. You can imagine people who end up in emergency situations, emergency rooms, with very serious injuries, people just die. Mm. We've we've become accustomed in Zambia yeah. to walking into the hospital and dying. When you go to the hospital, it's it's a, it's a mm. 50 50 chance of living and dying. You're either gonna live, either gonna die, depending on the mood of the staff member you're you're gonna meet in the in the ward, depending on whether there's Panadol, depending on whether there's painkillers. It's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. Mm. So, mm -hmm. Mr. Chita Luchlofia, yeah. yes, you are. You have been acquitted yeah. of your charges, but you are uh, guilty and, and, in the in the court of public opinion. As far as we're concerned, you're guilty of incompetence. You are guilty of not doing your job because people yeah. like Abigail are dying on a daily basis at the hands of our health system. Yeah. You have failed. The system has failed. This yeah. government has failed. You yeah. are all going. Yeah. You are all. Make no mistake. It's out. PF is gone. They need to go. And you see, somebody has just commented to say, we have good doctors in Zambia, but Zambians, why uh, did you have to be silent all this time till things have gone that bad? So why are people having uh, the fee-paying hospital? Where the Where is the money going? And the thing is, these are working for the government. They can't comment, but they inbox us who can speak to say, look, this is what we're going through. The moment um, a medical doctor speaks, uh, they'll be fired. I know of a doctor whose wife is part of an opposition party. And because uh, she's part of an opposition party, she has quite a position. Uh, he was fired. Um, according to the firing letter, he was distributing regalia at the hospital when he never even did that just because yeah. um, they want to put you in that corner, PF, the current government, they want to make sure they milk you dry and yeah. you, you are powerless, you can't speak. If you speak, yeah. they attack your job, they attack your business. So people can speak, yeah. but they are in fear. That's yeah. the fear that's going on. And because of yeah. that now, at least we even have a family um, of uh, Abigail, who are I think majority of them are doctors and they've yeah. spoken out. But what yeah. about others who can speak out? I think the, the pain here is because Abigail is a young girl. She's yeah. only just graduated. I've had a cousin who's just graduated in Russia. Um, she's she's a medical doctor right now. She's graduated. So I can imagine, you know, all fees, whether it's a scholarship she was on or not. But the fact that she's only just started her life now and then this happens, you know. Yeah. So 
it's 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 um heartbreaking. It's very heartbreaking. It's very heartbreaking. It's very heartbreaking. It's very heartbreaking. I can so see we have Dory. Hi, Dory. Hi, Dory. Hi, hi. Yeah, it's, it's so sad. Yeah, it's, it's so um, sad. You can um, still comment, JJ, can still comment because Doreen, I think she's still uh, trying to come on stream. Yeah, um, I actually yeah, have to go laughing. shortly, but I'll just end by okay. saying yeah. um, our, our thoughts are with Abigail's family. We okay. send them our well wishes as they try to navigate this new reality of mm -hmm. not having their sister, their daughter, their cousin, mm -hmm. their friend around. It's very sad. Yes. Um, the nation is with them. And you know we can only in 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 a quest to find a silver lining we can only as people of zambia find a way to make sure that the system starts to work for us because mm -hmm. next time it could be you it could be your your sister your cousin mm -hmm. who is found in the position that abigail was waiting mm -hmm. to be attended to by medical professionals so it's mm -hmm. in everyone's best interests yeah and, and um like you know what the brother has stated that you know he had to beg for her to be treated and he feels the same hospital that the sister has served could have done a better job. And I'm thinking, um, you know, did they neglect her on the basis that they felt maybe um, she's strong, should, should be better, or maybe because they didn't have the medical supplies, obviously they don't have. But it, it's heartbreaking, obviously it's shameful uh, to yeah. even read such things happening in Zambia. Um, yesterday I was in uh, Kalikiriki and JJ, you won't believe that there's no clinic and there's no proper road network. We had to be walking to different parts of Kalikiriki. Now I'm thinking of a heavily pregnant woman. How would she walk, um, you know, when she needs to give birth? So it means they have to even move to a nearby place, maybe live with a relative in Mutendere East or somewhere where there's a hospital. And, yeah. and I'm thinking the person who is the MP of Monali is a woman. Yeah. I mean, doesn't yeah. she know that women give birth? Yeah. You know, doesn't she know that women have so many needs? You know, men, at least you are strong. You don't go through labor and all those things. But, you know, there's different kinds of diseases as well. And during this yeah. COVID-19, you know, they're telling us to keep a social distance. But these people are not even... Um, um, sensitized in a, in, a, in a manner that they would even be aware. They would just say, oh, what, Corona, Corona. Nobody yeah. has given them face masks. Nobody yeah. has given them hand sanitizers. Nobody. Yeah. And yet, all we read in the papers is, you, you'll be charged 750 kwacha for yeah. not wearing a face mask. Yeah. Now, these are people who are very illiterate. Yeah. They're in Lusaka, but very, mm. very illiterate. Mm. They don't even know what coronavirus is and why they should wear a face mask. And, and let alone there's no clinic and there's no school in 2021, no primary mm. school. Mm. And then when you drive off to the edge, you see Ibex Hill, you see the mansions and the road network begins. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the and development. The who, yeah. And the people who vote are the people who are living in poverty. Yeah. You know, exactly. and they even know. I mean, somebody who's living in a mansion in Ibex will not queue for hours just to vote. What are no, they about voting no. for? They are exactly. comfortable. Yeah, exactly. You know. Yeah. So it's 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 pathetic, and I hope Zambians are really uh, looking at what's happening and not um, you know being bribed by fifty kwacha because that's what they give them fifty kwacha to vote for this party, and at the moment. We've even been told that you know some people are going through people's houses, asking them for the NRCs and offering them empowerment and 800 kwacha. You know that 800 kwacha may be a life-saving money at that moment, but that's, that's you signing up for five years of poverty five years, again. Five years of destruction. You know. Five years of destruction. We we are going to flush like, um, out uh, incompetent leaders, yeah. uh, absent leaders. Yeah. Leaders who are preoccupied yeah. with filling their, their pockets as, 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 as far up as they possibly can, all those leaders are, are leaving. Yeah. Zambians will no longer allow to be treated like second-class citizens in our Zambia. And if every person does not stand up, whether you live in Ibex Hill or Kalikiliki, 
we all have the responsibility to vote next year. Um, and please make sure that you register, get your NRC, get your voters card, and get ready to flush the system out. It's, 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 it's very important that people realize um, that the pain of anybody is our pain now. Oh. You know, the loss of yeah. Abigail's life is everyone's pain. And that's why we're speaking about it. It's not even trying to gain any mileage. Like somebody has no. commented, you know, I don't even know where they are from. But if you understand yeah. what we've been talking about, what we've been speaking about on this platform is the same things. I'm not affected. Like I've said before, I'm not affected. Where we yeah. live, where I'm coming from, is free medical care, free yeah. education. If yeah. you don't have a job, the government pays you for not working. Yeah. If you don't have money for rent, the government helps you. So yeah. how come other countries are doing that? And in Zambia, we can't. Yet we are the second largest producing, uh, copper producing uh, uh, country in the world. Absolutely. Or is it in Africa? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. The second largest producing copper you know, country in Africa is Zambia. Yeah. And yet you can mm. see poverty. Lying around. AJ, have you seen a video? Have you seen a video of rats? I saw that, yes. I was going to mention that, actually. Yeah, that's another classic example. You know, you have rats, rats that are not even afraid of human presence, which tells you that those rats have been there for a very long time. When a rat is not scared of a human being, the rat has been in the hospital for a long time. Okay, who is copper belt minister? Who is minister of health? Who is health permanent secretary? And what are they doing? Why do we have rats in the hospital in broad daylight it's a shock. in the presence of, of patients? Yeah, carry on. Either. Yeah, carry on. The, I I I connected to the wrong Wi-Fi. I'm supposed to connect to the stronger one, which is my phone. <laughs> ah, okay. So I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was just saying, you know, when you have rats in a in a hospital ward that aren't even afraid of human beings, those rats have been there for a while. So we have mm -hmm. to ask who's the health, who is who's permanent secretary there, who's copper belt mm -hmm. minister, and who's who's health mm -hmm. minister. Okay. How can you possibly have not have the, the most basic pest control at a hospital. And that, that, that video, and you, know, and you know, that video has been making the rounds on, yeah. on BBC Africa. Yeah. Now, is that the representation of Zambia you want out yeah. there? Is that what you want people to see? Yeah. And, and you know, BBC thrive on such stories. Uh, because yeah. then, yeah. you know, when they talk about poverty in Zambia, like in the UK, for example, they do what they call a comic relief and red nose day where they raise money and zambia is always on the list and i'm thinking we have um ministers like boman lusambo who can boast that they use two million culture to shop yeah and yet we're asking yeah. for help from other countries so if, if how can a minister who's just been yeah. in position for five years be a millionaire uh has built loads of houses is so rich and can brag about two million kwacha. Two million kwacha is not small money. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And painkillers. Um, painkillers yeah. are not, not, not in hospitals yeah. either. So they are not in hospitals. That's... And you're bragging of shopping with uh, two million kwacha. It's, yeah. it's a shame. You know, yeah. um, there was a time in the UK when a minister had claimed for a little bit of some money, like, you know, they pay them is it allowances for transport and accommodation? And the money was only 3,000 pounds. It was all over the newspapers, public funds. Yeah. You're misusing yeah. public funds. They yeah. don't even have a government vehicle. GRZ, if you see the GRZ vehicles exactly. in Zambia, go buy four Hilux. Yeah. One car can buy medical equipment for one clinic at least, and, and Panadol. Exactly. We just, yeah. we just want accountability. That's all. That's all we're asking for. It's not too much mm -hmm. to ask for. 
or yeah. government of the day. We want accountability. If we have a health minister, all the health facilities must be in order. If you collect yes. taxes, collect payee tax, you collect corporate tax, you collect VAT, where is the money going? Why do we yeah. not have painkillers? We're not even talking about sophisticated drugs here. We're talking yeah. about simple painkillers, simple stretchers, a simple neck brace to hold your neck up when you've been in an accident. Where are those facilities? Where are they? Mm. What is your justification for those things not being there? Mm. It's, it's, it's shameful. Uh, Luembe Joy has written, the sad part is after she died, she gets paid. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, how insulting. <laughs> how insulting is that? Yeah. My question is, was that money supposed to be used for funeral expenses or government was trying to help the family with funeral expenses? And then when, you know, I don't know about Zambia, when somebody dies, whether people are allowed to have access to their account, but in the UK, the moment somebody dies, you are no longer allowed to use the money. So I don't know how that will work, um, whether they expect the family to withdraw the funds, I, I don't know. But it's sad that, you know, she's worked for her own, you know, funeral expense. Yeah. yeah. That's heartbreaking. Yeah. That's heartbreaking. You die, they, they send your benefits when you die. That's the, you get your benefits you when, you pay when you die. Very, you very, imagine? very insulting, actually. Can you imagine? I can only Fish imagine what the, the family is going, her family is going through. Yeah, they're going through pain. Uh, Enoch Andres says, no matter what, this government will go. They need to go. I mean, yeah. at least if 2020 has not taught Zambians a lesson, um, yeah. I'm sure by now you have learned many lessons. Uh, yeah. Faith William comments on Facebook, this is true. Our health system has really failed us. Last year in February here in Kapiri, when my daughter was admitted at the hospital, um, I witnessed this nurse die while the doctor uh, doctors were there and they said there is nothing they can do because there is no medicine. Uh, the mother and the family cried while watching their beloved die just like that. That is That was really sad uh, that it made me get my daughter out of there urgently and took her somewhere else where she was helped and it was costly. Now imagine those who can't afford. And that's what I was saying. Um, yeah. You know, um, there's fee paying hospitals where people pay money, but not everybody can afford that because people are struggling. There's huge poverty in Zambia. Um, I mean, my daughter was in hospital here in, in, in Zambia when she was unwell. Just for one night, we paid 3,000 kwacha. Mm. Yeah. Now 3,000 kwacha, is someone's um, maybe 30% of their salary. People are getting paid 450 kwacha in Zambia, by the way, and 600 kwacha for working wow. a whole month. Yeah. And you can imagine 3,000 kwacha is yeah. because by God's grace, we could afford it. Yeah. But what about others who can? And that's why I keep on saying this. I'm not speaking for myself, but for the people okay. who can't afford this life. Exactly. In the voiceless. They're so voiceless. I can voiceless. Yeah, I can afford to take my children to good private schools here in Zambia, but people cannot afford to take their children even to a government school. Mm. Why? Because the government schools don't have good facilities. They don't even care about building extra schools like in Kalikiliki. Somebody has commented that Kalikiliki is just a settlement that people just, you know, uh, started on their own. What do people do when they have nowhere to stay? They mm. start building things for themselves. Exactly. But if exactly. the government has a plan for their people, we wouldn't have people settling down anywhere where they want. You know, if exactly. Bob and Lusambo, you know, Hello? sorry, when somebody's trying to call me, sorry, when somebody tries to call me, I don't know, in, in Zambia, the network cuts off because I'm using my phone internet. You know, he lives, he can see the poverty okay. right before his eyes. And then he's saying, I use two million kwacha to shop. You know, if truly you really love the people of Zambia, you wouldn't even brag about two million kwacha shopping money. You know, yeah. um, Rapson has commented on uh, YouTube, Uncle Rapson Tembo is an amazing supporter of my YouTube channel. He says the young medical doctor died working two months without getting her salary when Boman Lusambo and Edgar Lungu get paid every month. 
And, and that's what happens in, in the government. They get yep. paid every month without fail. Yep. During this COVID, they haven't even sacrificed their salaries. They're still getting paid. Is it 30,000 quarter they get paid? They haven't yep. even said, okay, yep. can you cut our salary to 10,000 or whatever so that we help people. And they are bragging about shopping two million quarter. So Abigail's death yep. is painful, yep. very, very painful. Um, uh, like Martha Gondre is saying, um, is Martha Gondre on Facebook is saying, it's not even time to pinpoint everyone. It's a matter of changing the system. How do you expect health workers to work with no tools like medications? When last, when last did you even go to the clinic hospital to check on the shortages and medication? That's the duty of, of the MP in that area, not me. Because mm -hmm. they exactly. get paid. Exactly. They get people's taxpayers' money. And this is one thing that the mindset of Zambia needs to change as well. When they need to realize that, look, the government makes a lot of money. And that money is to help the people of Zambia. Mm -hmm. How come, you know, countries like UK collect taxes from a small community and they use that tax to pay for the schools, for them to be run, and children go to school for free. They pay for hospitals and people go to hospital for free. My son has had two operations in the UK, free of charge. He's never paid. My daughter also had an operation before in the UK, free of charge. She never paid. And there was not all these long queues that people have to wait. Yes, there's waiting lists for donations, you know, like organ donations. You know, that thing is everywhere all over the world because the population is growing as well. But when it comes to, you know, looking after the people, that's why we always say thank God for the NHS. Because the NHS, they really, really try. Honestly, they might not be perfect. That's the National Health Service in the, in the UK. They really try. And they use taxpayers' money. So why can't our yeah. government also use taxpayers' exactly. money to supply medicine? You know? Yeah, exactly. If any child in the exactly. UK doesn't pay for medication as well as long as you're below the age of 18 you when you when you're given a prescription you go to any pharmacy you sign and the government pays for the child because children are vulnerable exactly so you expect parents to be the ones always paying for these things it's a struggle so the mindset needs to change Somebody will be there saying, when is the last time you visited a hospital yourself to see change? When it's the government's duty to make sure that there's medication, not my duty. They have people's taxpayers' money, not me. Exactly. I can't afford to give all the hospitals yeah. medication. And you're fine. That's, that's, huh? It's impossible. Yeah. Like you said, you're fine. You don't have to worry about this. You don't have to worry about this. And yeah. you are going to get your critics who say, don't politicize this issue, you know, don't start mm -hmm. trying to ga gain political mileage. It's not about political mileage. What we are saying is that this this situation of Abigail comes full circle to what, what you know, Lily has been talking about, is that about. when the system is rotten, yeah, when the system is rotten, it's everyday people like us on the ground who suffer, okay? Yeah. And well, you'll get people saying that, trying to trying to to, to discredit the, the work that you're doing. At the end of the day, it's all about speaking for people who don't have an opportunity to speak for themselves. At this point in time, I really don't understand the mindset of anyone who can support the patriotic front. I really I'm don't. Telling you, but that's your issue. I'm you. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, like Patson Motombo is um, commenting on my watch party on my Facebook uh, normal page. He says, imagine giving people money in the name of empowerment. So if I may ask, where have these people been for them to be coming this time with this empowerment money, money meant for fighting Corona, um, you know, Sha? And, and for me, this is what I'm talking about, misplaced priorities, where the government can give... The president awarded 470 million kwacha. That's a lot of money to run so many hospitals. Excuse me, if you're not angry about about this government, then I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you expect, honestly. Because that 470 million kwacha, even just to 2 million mm. kwacha, can build a good clinic in Kalikiliki. Yeah. So do, do, I, I don't know whether people they, they, they see the government. 
John Chita says the current uh, leadership is not up to good. No matter how we speak, their focus is based on stealing and, and enriching themselves. We are together in this campaign. PF must go. I've got Rose. Rose, um, I believe Absolutely. Rose is from the state. How are you, Rose? My I'm sister. okay. How are you, Lily? Um, you yeah, know, auntie. my heart, my heart is just broken when I saw uh, Abigail yesterday. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even work. I I look. I'm like, am I dreaming? Really, mm -hmm. what people are saying in Zambia is just even. I've been following you, Larry. You know, I live here in the United States. I work in the medical field. I'm a nurse right now. My work yeah. really in Zambia. People are even bragging that mm -hmm. PF must come back again. <laughs> <laughs> really, for me, I even tell my, my, my family, I'm like, look, what have they done for you guys? Yeah. What have they done for you? Making that bridge for, for I don't know if <laughs> it's uh, McKinney and people are bragging. Really, people, they have to stand up. Mm. I visited one of the clinic in um, in uh, Kabanana. It's one of the yeah. doctor used to work at Mwanawasa. This man is from Kenya. He's a good doctor. I'm not. I'm not uh, complaining about. But he is very expensive. You can't go yeah. there with one dollar or or hundred dollars. Yeah. Just to treat you one leg, it's about. My, I I spend so much money. Why I'm speaking like this? Because I have seen in Zambia, guys, people, they have to vote really, really good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, Myself, I work here. We, we're working here in the United States whereby they're even paying us extra money as a pay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As a pay. You work four hours at the end of the day, they give you $300 on top. Yeah. The governor signed the money, each and everyone. I can even show you can go get my my gift card five hundred dollars from mm -hmm. the governor. Mm -hmm. I have it in my purse, and mm -hmm. people really, really, what you're doing. I wish people we can come and stand and speaking on top of our voices. Mm -hmm. It's a shame in Zambia, and then the president is even is even is even is even saying that uh, we are doing well. What have they done? Making roads whereby two days, three days, I was in Zambia. I'm walking on the side of the road. The roads are coming out. Mm -hmm. When people are speaking, say no, they are they they are not saying anything good, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. really really a shame yeah. in the hospital, especially in the hospital. For me, because I always look at the patients, my family, friends, mm -hmm. like. Uh, my uncle right now is from Wapula, where Mr. Chilufia come from. That's where I come from. Mm -hmm. And uh, like the way uh, Elisha Mwesha was saying today, whereby they just acquitted him, I said, it's free go. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of things about Zambia because, because I'm from mm -hmm. Zambia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Mr. Chilufia used to work with my brother-in-law at Mansa General Hospital. Where did he mm -hmm. get all that much money? Mm -hmm. He used to work with my brother and my brother in law is in heaven. Hmm. Oh. Where did he get the money? Last week, last week, this is because there's only COVID. I was supposed to be in Zambia. They wanted yes. to take the land for my mom, my late mom. Hmm. That's right in Wapola. And people hmm. are saying that PF must come. People are even saying that don't speak Nyanja or Bemba because they're in Lusaka. You guys, please, please. My heart is just broken, broken. I don't yeah. want to be crying. I don't want to cry because I'm at work. Mm. It's a shame when Zambia is a shame. People, they sleep with no food. Mm. And people are saying that I spent two, two million kwacha just for food. What did they get? Shopping. Money? Shopping. Imagine. <laughs> mm. There was a time I was in Wapula. This lady, she couldn't even have money to buy paraffin. When the people buy paraffin, she go put the candle, I don't know if it's a candle or the lamp, just to have that uh, um, paraffin in the light. And then the minister is saying that they are working. Lord help Zambia. We have so mm. many things in Zambia, but people, the money is just coming in the, in the, in the mm. different hands.
No medicine in the hospital, no food, no electricity. They can't even pay. I lived in Botswana. They were having electricity, which has come from Zambia. Not even one day they didn't even have no electricity. Imagine. What a country we are living. Mm. It, it just, uh, you know what, lady, just keep on moving the movement. If people, mm. they don't want to, they don't want to change the government because they're going to suffer another, I don't know if 10 years or five years. Yeah. When this, when the PF come back, I don't know you guys, you're going to even have anything in the country. They have to understand the, yeah. the, the citizen put them there. They have to respect the citizens. I'm here in the United States. I came with nothing. But here yeah. I am. Even if when I came with nothing, I can go to the hospital without pain. Yeah. Hmm? In Zambia, you have to have thousands of money exactly. to be treated. Exactly. Yes. Thousands. If you don't have no money, mm. you. there was a time my mom went to the clinic. My mom was 87. Just to experience the way they, I, I almost took that that uh, issue on CNN, but I said, Lord, let me just put myself mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. It's a shame in Zambia. It's a shame. Look at the younger doctor, 23 years old, 23 years old, 23. Mm -hmm. It's a age. It's a it's a age of my my daughter who is in Russia. Mm -hmm. She's a uh, engineering in Russia, 23 years old, and she just came back. My heart was just. Another group came last week. Mm. And mm. you know, you guys, you have to do something in Zambia. Like um, Auntie Auntie Rose, somebody yes. is just commenting on yes. YouTube. Uh, Joseph Mombazi says, "Sorry to say this, but only a shallow-minded person will vote for PF." I agree. You must but be shallow for people like this. The thing is that Absolutely. they're going to give them fifty quachas, fifty quachas, mm. and the chitenges. They start mm. dancing. Mm. Mm. Like Gladys Chilombo is saying, true what you are saying in hospitals, no medicine, too much corruption, especially for us we, uh, who has no trades. It's not uh, things by labor office muchingola tefintu. I'm telling you, Auntie and um, JJ, the poverty in Zambia, you can see it with your eyes. You don't need to be told. Uh, and, and when people see you, they see you as a savior hoping maybe you can change their lives. And that's why I've, insta I've started even empowerment projects of at least maybe giving them 100 eggs, egg trays, at least a small group for them to survive on. It's pathetic. I'm telling you, people are really struggling. And during this time period of COVID-19, they have no jobs because some of them, their husbands were working as drivers. Some of them, they were working as maids. And because now their bosses are telling them you know, it's, there's corona, go home. They're at home, stuck with nothing. They are surviving by the grace of God. Yeah. It's just a shame in Zambia, really. For me, I, and you know, you can't help everybody. You can only help little people, whatever you can. And, uh, mm -hmm. and people, they want to come and again start suffering, whereby the president doesn't even know what happened in the country. And people, they can't even say, no, Mr. President is uh, hanging with wrong people. No way. No way. He knows what is, what, what is happening. I mean, and his the, own family is living in poverty. So he knows. And you know, exactly. Mm -hmm. Because we have seen people with money, whereby they just mm -hmm. go down the hill. Money is just like rain. It can just rain and go like tomorrow. Mm. Whereby the president is the one who is the forefront of corruption. <laughs> corruption. <laughs> For me, I, I, I check a lot tomorrow of things in Zambia. Exactly. Mm. Mr. Boma yeah. Lusambo. Boma Lusambo, who can even stand up and be insulting people. Imagine. I don't know how people see things in Zambia. I, I, it's just uh, whereby you, your mind is in, enough in Zambia. You keep on thinking how what is going. That was that was gassing. The president didn't even stand up. We used to pray, pray and fast. I say, Lord, help us. People are sleeping. You don't know when you hear the phone in Zambia. I say maybe my family have been Something attacked. Something has happened. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have a, an auntie of mine from um, oh. you know the UK. The son was gassed. Hard-working guy. He's now suffered a stroke. 
who's going to pay for his you know bills at home Shame. and look after his family nobody the government they don't have that system in place to help vulnerable people they don't yesterday i saw a vulnerable elderly man that lives on his own the neighbors are the ones who contribute the little within kalikiliki they are all poor as well they are the ones who contribute little by little whatever they are having that day for lunch and take it to him no family no support alone in the house and those are the lonely people that we've seen as well in yeah. britain whereby we go there just to even talk to them two hours three hours the government has even paid you know that support for someone to just talk to them but there's no support whatsoever yeah. so the death of um yeah. this young lady is painful uh pastor mumba favor is commenting on uh facebook that dr Chitali Chilfia was acquitted, you know, seriously, just like that. You know, just like that. Yeah. It's painful. It's painful. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining on the stream. I am about to leave now. I just wanted us to have a quick chat. Um, Michael in India, uh, an amazing supporter of this channel as well, is just saying, what? why is Lungu doing like this? Change the government. You know, so the government needs to really, really change. I'm sure the message is clear. And our condolences to the family of um, Abigail. And uh, we must all try, by all means, if you can, to reach out to the family. I bet they are in Kawe. For those of you who are in Kawe, um, I'll also speak to the aspiring candidate in Kawe as well to reach out to the family um, and just see how the, we, uh, we can support the family as, as a team. It's not easy in this period. Um, so thank you so much uh, for your contributions. I am Lindo. so grateful. Yeah. Uh, any last and words, keep up, keep up. Yeah, I was just going to say, lastly, um, just in, as a whole, we need to start uh, demanding nothing but excellence from our leaders, nothing but excellence from the system. I think mm -hmm. uh, we've become too accepting of mediocrity. You like mediocre things, and it reflects a mediocre leadership. So it's, I think it's uh, next year is not just about voting, but also yes. changing our mindset as people mm -hmm. of, of what we are going to accept and what we're not going to accept. Mm -hmm. So with that said, please keep up the amazing work, Lily. Um, we are behind you to speak for the voiceless because your country and our country needs you right now. And once again, condolences to uh, Abigail's family. They are in our thoughts and in our prayers. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Auntie Rose, what would you like to say, your last word? The, my last word, really, I'm just so thankful and humbled for the work you're doing. Definitely, really, will support you and uh, whatever we can, we can do. But people, whenever you speak to people, you have to tell them because what is happening in Zambia is not a... Uh, is, is, People, I don't even know the way the, the president is looking at the people and then he wants to come back in the power. What mm -hmm. is he going to give it to them? Because now mm -hmm. he just want to come back and take the last piece, whatever mm -hmm. the Zambian has. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a shame because everybody, for me, I have people like who work at the FBI, one of my my, my family friends I have, they, they usually say things on the on the on the internet on the youtube he was even asking me this is a man who is 81 yeah what is happening in zambia and then for him because he always collect the stamps so he know what is happening in zambia and really for me my heart is just broken for abigail mm -hmm. because she's yeah. so young she's just like my yeah. daughter my daughter she's gonna be 24 in november yeah, yeah. Yeah, and um, exactly. Lily exactly. will support you, definitely yeah. will be behind you, whatever we can help. Like for me, I'll be speaking to other people, but you know, Zambia and some people who are in the diaspora, when they're doing fine, they don't care. Especially mm. if you don't know the Lord. When you know the Lord, you understand the way it feels. Mm. But if you don't know the Lord, you just know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't even say, oh, that they're in Zambia, I'm here. It doesn't work like that. We 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 came from Zambia. We are here by some people. They just came by the grace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. true. By the grace, people. A lot of people have tried, but they can't even come up here. Uh, people mm -hmm. they are here, but they can't even do anything. They can't even work. Mm -hmm. But we are able to work. We have to look after 
our family, even if they are not your family, like for me, even if they are not my family, I just try whatever I can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. No, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you so much, uh, lady, for the good work. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, people are asking about donations on my YouTube. For any donations, you can donate to Lillian Mutambo and all donations you send to that number via World Remit. And as you can see, the money goes to the people, not me, because I know that um, a lot of people need your help. They are really struggling. And um, I will be speaking to uh, the people that did the fundraising for COVID-19 funds the last time. They, I think they raised about $17,000 that they need to channel the money um, <laughs> correctly. Um, so Auntie Hansen also is asking, Hansen is asking, you just send via World Remit or MTN money or Western Union, whatever you can, it goes to the people. So many people have supported. I was able to donate face masks and now I've started an egg project, which is doing so well. You know, when you buy 100 trays of eggs for a group of people is to empower them to do what they can with that. Um, so I'm about to go and get some more eggs right now and go in the field. I have two different places to go to and it's hard work, but God is my strength. So if you're, pain, if you're feeling the pain, if everybody's feeling the pain of, you know, Abigail's death, uh, the death of people who are not popular, the death of family members, um, you know, the, the hospital negligence that people experience. Of course, it's because there's no medicine. So hospital workers will do what they can, but when there's no medicine, they have no support, they're not being paid for three months or two months. I mean, it's, it's a challenge for them to even um, <laughs> come and give you the proper medical care. You know, like Angie Rose said in America, she's even got a $500 check in her purse. <laughs> yeah, I can even go bring it and show everybody the governor. <laughs> Another Extra one is money. coming, $500, five. Extra and then money. When, yeah, it's yeah. extra money. And Why uh, would it be that hard? <laughs> well, I work. Actually, yeah. I work at night. I'm at work right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so... Thank you so much. Obviously, it's, a, it's, it's a bitter topic. Yeah. yeah, it's a bitter topic. But, you know, like I was telling people on my Facebook page, I posted a post this morning. I said, look, in, in Britain, we are paid by the hour. And I, I don't understand people who are being paid and then they are not working. You know, you are being paid 30000 as an MP and then you're being paid money for sitting in parliament. You're being paid allowances, car and all those things. And then you don't work. I don't know what, what type of heart people have. Time I don't know what type of heart people have. That's what, that's what time it is. It's time for them to go. Yeah. If they you're going to be in parliament, you're going to work. Yes. You know, next yes. year, everyone who's coming into office will work. If you're not working, yeah. you're going. Yeah, they need to go. Okay, thank you so much, my amazing uh, contributors. We'll have another, right, another live this Bye. evening. But I thought this topic was quite urgent for us to have, and so many people have watched on Facebook. And thank you so much, uh, JJ and Rose, and obviously the commenters on my YouTube and Facebook platforms. I am so grateful. Um, even says my president, Edgar Lumbo, is, hum is humble savage. He knows most Zambians are ignorant and lack knowledge. Please sensitize people on good lead leadership, not to over. Honestly, you know, um, somebody is asking about Auntie Rose linking them to work. <laughs> Sonia, <laughs> uh, let's fight for our country to change that. Otherwise, you know, if people can travel from Africa to within Africa to go and work in Botswana or South Africa and get paid good money, it's possible for that to happen as well in Zambia. So that's why we are pushing. And like you know, the president of UPND, Mr. Haka Ende Hichilama, he has stated that we are going to improve our economy in Zambia. So thank you so much. Take care and I love everybody. See you uh, this evening for another live stream as we talk about other issues of Zambia. May the soul of Abigail rest in peace. Bye. Take care. It is